Hello everyone again. In our last video, we looked at creating the additional tables for our database. Now in this video, we're going to be looking at creating the queries in Microsoft Office Access. Now for this date, um, SBA, you are required to create three databases. Sorry, not three databases, but three queries. The first one says list the name, gender, profession, and age of all candidates from the D Democratic Action Party. You are to save that query as QRY underscore DAP. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you how we create this query. So first thing, when we're creating a query, we click on the Create tab. Then we go to Query Design. We want to go to Query Design because we want to determine exactly what we want to have in the query. Now based on the information that they want to pull from the table, we know that since we are being asked to get the name, gender, profession and age of all candidates from the DAP party, then it means that we need to use the candidate personal data table and only that table. So we're going to click on that table and click add or we can double click on the table. I'm going to double click and then I'm going to click close. Now we are asked for the names of the person. So we want to add, we want to, when we're doing queries, we want to be able to add the field names. That those are these names that are inside of the table here to the query grid. The field names will come in this row and the table that the field is coming from will appear in this row. Now this is your the sort row and the sort always used if you want to sort the any particular field in a particular way. The show row is used to decide whether or not you want a column to show. So if you have several columns going along here but you only want to show the first two, you can uncheck the box for the remaining ones that you do not want to show in the result. The criteria row is to determine which pieces of data will be taken from the table. In this case, there is no specific data that we want to take from the table. We only want to show the first name, the last name, the So it's the first name, last name, so it's a name, which is the first name and last name, gender, profession, and age. So I want to go ahead and add gender, profession, and age. Now, there are three ways we can add fields to the table. Earlier, I just double-clicked. So I double-click on first name and last name came in. So I want to add gender. We can click on the field name, drag it, and place it over the column. Then the third way is we can go to the column that we desire to put the field in, drop down the column, and select the field that we want to use. Now if you have multiple tables in the grid, you have to be careful about which field you are selecting from which table. In that case, if you had multiple tables, you would see the field name with a full stop and the table after that. Now that we have first name, last name, gender and profession, we are asked for age, but we, if you look, there is no age inside of the table. So what we're going to do, we're going to expand the width of this column and we're going to create an age field. Now I've already typed it out so I'm going to paste it and the format is you put the name of the field that you're going to use. It's really a calculated field. Then we're going to be using the date diff function. So it's date diff. Then we're going to open bracket. We're going to put the format which is year, year, year in double quotation mark comma. Then we're going to be using the date of birth field. So we put that in bracket, square brackets, comma, and then no, open and close parentheses, and then close parentheses again. And that is your date diff command. Now the, the, um, the query was specific about which part they want. So we actually have a criteria here, and we are asked for the persons from the DAP. So in the criteria row, we, know we, we need to put in a criteria, but for us to put in a criteria, we need to select the party that the candidate belongs to. I'm looking in my table now and I don't see party. Apparently I may have left it off. I'm going to double check the SBA paper to see what should have been in the table. Title, first name, last name, address, street on party of birth, gender, profession, consent, number. Oh, I omitted the party when I was doing it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fix that and I'm going to come back right back to the query. So I realized now that I had left out the party and the votes received when I was creating the table in the spreadsheet. So I have put in those two headings, but I really want to show you something important. When you have gone back to your elections data backup and you have highlighted and copied your votes received and you go back to the candidate personal data table, 
Note the votes received has a formula in it. We can't just right click and then paste. We have to say right click and then paste special. And then we select value so that it does not bring over the formulas. If you do not select paste special, it's going to create an, some errors in the field. So we click OK. And of course, we want to ensure that there are no decimal points. So you have to go through individually in some cases and adjust the decimal point. I'm going to do that quickly. So all of that has been done. And it now means that I'm going to have to go back to my database table that I had inserted previously and make some changes to it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to show you before I copy and paste it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the database. I'm going to just save. I'm going to close this. I'm not even going to save. I'm going to close it. I'm going to save the query for the time being. And I'm going to give it the name that it was supposed to be given and that name is query on the qry underscore dap i'm going to save it for the time being and i'm going to close it and come back to it so the candidate personal data table is the one that had the errors in it i am going to first go to go to the database tools then relationships I'm going to remove the relationship between elections data table. I'm going to right click on it and then delete. And I'm going to say yes. I'm going to right click on this table and I'm going to hide the table. I'm going to add it back, but I'm going to have to add back the correct thing. So I'm going to go, go ahead, right click on this one, delete the old table, say yes. I'm going to copy the, the edited table going to highlight everything here right click copy go back to the database right click paste say yes and we should have everything no this is the candidate personal data table we're going to open it just to double check that everything is okay we're going to go back to the data sheet data design view and we're going to set this the candidate ID as a primary key. We're going to change the field size to 5. And we're going to ensure that the constituency number is also 5. And that this text, this is number, date slash time, and everything is OK. And we save it. We say yes. Close the table. Go back to the relationship. Now we need to add back the table. So we go to the design tab, click on show table. Add back the per candidate personal data table, close it, and we're ready again to put back the relationship. Oh, in this case, I'm going to have to go back and make the same change that I made previously. I'm going to do that and return. Now that we have, I have reinstated the relationship and corrected any errors that were in the candidate personal data table, I'm going to save the relationship. I'm going to close it, and then now I'm going to go back to the query DAP design view so here we have the edited version with the constituency number and the party so we add the party so i'm going to go ahead and add the party i'm going to move it and place it in the location where it's supposed to be right beside profession now we are asked that for only the persons who are in dap so in the criteria row underneath party in the quotation marks we're going to type back DAP exactly as it appears in our table. So once we have done that, we're going to click on the run. And if you notice, all the persons who have been selected have party as DAP and their ages have been calculated. Save the query. We are finished with the query one. We can close it. Now the second query says, list the candidate's name, party, Number of voters, number of votes received for candidates in constituencies with more than 6,500 voters and where candidates receive less than 2,500 of the votes. Sort the data in descending order on the number of votes received by the candidate. Save it as QRY underscore votes received. So same procedure, create, query, design. I'm going to minimize this a little. And because we want, we need to now decide which tables we are going to be using. We need 
for the candidates name party and number of voters we're going to need the candidate table and the personal data table for the number of voters we will need the constituency table votes received that is going to be coming from the candidate table and the constituency name is going to be coming from the constituency table so based on how this one looks it appears that we're only going to be needing the only two tables which would be the candidate personal data table and the constituency data table if we need to add addition the additional table later on we can always go back and add that so we're going to close that we're supposed to put in the name party number of voters so we're going to go ahead and put in those first name last name so i'm double clicking i did one by accident i'm going to right click and i'm going to cut so first name last name number of voters next thing we need to add name party number of voters i left out the part i'm going to have to go back to add that number of voters number of votes received so i'm going to add the party and i'm going to move it so number of voters then votes received i'm going to take that from the candidate personal data table and the next fields after votes received okay so we have everything i believe now so we want it from those persons who are in constituencies with more than 6,500 voters. So we're going to go on the number of voters and we're going to put greater than 6,500. And then the other, there are two criteria in this one. It says that the, the candidates receive less than 2,500 votes. So we're going to go to the votes receive column in the same criteria row. We're going to type less than 2,500. The next thing we are told to do is that we are supposed to sort the data in descending order on the number of votes received. So we have to go to the votes received column in the sort row, drop it down, select descending order. And there is query number two. We are going to run the query. There we have it. If you notice that it's still giving you decimal points here, we can fix that by going back to the design view, right clicking on the field that has the decimal points we're going to go to properties in the property inspection sheet we're going to select the format box drop it down we're going to select standard and in the decimal place section we're going to say zero because we can't have point anything of a voter we're going to run the query again and it has been fixed we're going to save the query and this query is supposed to be called qry underscore votes received i am going to be lazy i'm going to copy it highlight copy and I'm going to attempt to paste it highlight there right um, hold on your control key and press V and that is it and you click OK and that is your second query done save we can now close it now we have one more query to do and this is a query that has a calculated field it says using a calculated field determine the total votes cast in each constituency save it as query underscore total underscore votes underscore cast now previously you were told when you were doing the spreadsheet how to calculate the total votes cast we're going to be using the same formula all right so we're going to go ahead and start the process create query design now we need the elections data table and we need the constituency data table we're going to close that we're going to add the constituency name then we're going to create that calculated field it's supposed to be called total votes cast so i'm going to go ahead i'm going to type in total votes cast and we're going to put a colon that represents the equal sign now the formula was number of voters so we open square bracket and we're going to type number of voters exactly as it, how it appears in the table if it's capitalized capitalize it if it is common you have it in common letters do it the same way so number of voters close the square bracket multiplied by the percentage voter turnout that is inside of the elections data table so we're going to times and every time we type a field that is coming from a table we enclose it in square brackets now if you don't spell the things correctly you're going to have errors when you run the query so we're going to close the square bracket and that is the formula so we're going to save the query and the query is supposed to be called
query underscore total underscore votes underscore cards so i'm gonna right highlight right click copy it again i'm going to go back to the database that is highlighted already Control v to paste click ok and that should be it make sure that there are no errors no additional unnecessary additional spaces in your formula and we're ready to go so we save it run it and when you run it it should be like that notice again the decimal place we're going to go back and we're going to fix that right click on the calculated field we're going to go to properties oh it's already there so we're going to do it again properties format is going to be standard the small places is going to be zero we save it we run it fixed and that is your last query